Welcome to the second part of coordinate transformations. In the first part, we talked about what coordinate transformation is. And we also talked about the two cases of coordinate transformations, which are pure rotation and pure translation. In this video, we are going to talk about the more general case, which is the coordinate transformation when there is both a translation and a rotation occurring at the same time. Here, I have drawn both the fixed frame and the moving frame. At first, the moving frame is just translated by some units in X and some units in Y about the fixed frame. And then it is rotated by an angle of theta in the anticlockwise direction. So this combined motion is the translation and rotation combined. Here is how you should think about it. First, the moving frame and the fixed frame are at the same position. Their origins coincide. Then the moving frame is displaced by a vector d. So its orientation isn't changed. It is just displaced. And then once it is at the vector d, it is rotated about an angle theta in the anticlockwise direction. Now, if I know a point in the moving frame, how do I express the same point in the fixed frame? We can do so by using the formula big X equals the rotation matrix times the small x plus d, where d is the origin of the moving frame expressed in the fixed frame. A is the rotation matrix or the orientation matrix, which is cosine of theta, sine of theta, negative sine of theta, cosine of theta, a two by two matrix. The small x is the point expressed in the moving frame and the big X is the same point expressed in the fixed frame. You should see this as the moving frame first being displaced by a vector D and then it is rotated by an angle theta in the anticlockwise direction, which is represented by the rotation matrix A. Now let's talk about the two special cases of this. The first is when there is no displacement. So the D vector is zero in X and zero in Y. So putting this into the equation, we get x equals a times the small x, which is the same thing that we got for the case of pure rotation. And the second case is when there is no rotation. So the angle theta is zero. When I put zero in the rotation matrix, I get an identity matrix. And as we know, anything multiplied by the identity matrix is going to give me the same matrix. So when I multiply the identity matrix by the small x, I get small x. So hence I get the equation big X equals small x plus D, which is the same equation that we got for pure translation. Now let's solidify our understanding of this with the help of an example. So I have drawn a fixed frame F and a moving frame M. Notice that the moving frames X axis is vertically pointing upwards and the Y axis is pointing towards the left. And the D vector is the displacement vector, which is the displacement of the origin of the moving frame with respect to the fixed frame. And the angle of rotation theta is 90 degrees. And now I mark a point small x, which is a point expressed in the moving frame. And I need to find big X, which is the same point coordinate in the fixed frame. Right here, I would encourage you to pause this video for a while and see if you can do this on your own. By using the formula big X equals a X plus D with theta as 90 degrees, small X as one, one, and the displacement vector as two and three, I get one and four. You can verify this by having a look at the diagram here, or even by making an accurate sketch of this diagram, if you wish to. This brings us to the end of the second part of coordinate transformation video. If you found this video useful, do subscribe and as always, see you in the next part.